Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, Long Island is a proud host of the N90 Tracon. It's uh, actually nestled in the, uh, the north center part of, uh, of my district. I visited there a couple weeks ago, met with uh, the individuals who uh, run that facility, and it was definitely eye-opening to the aviation industry. Um, but as we've discussed today, unfortunately, the nation's workforce challenges deeply have affected the aviation community. Um, and on the topic of the current and future challenges facing the aerospace workforce, uh, air traffic controllers play a vital role in ensuring flight safety and efficiency. There is an air traffic controller shortage uh, that has been overlooked, we believe, for far too long. And the number of air traffic controllers that have clocked enough training hours at N90 are dangerously low, and if left unaddressed, will be harmful to New Yorkers and obviously their passenger experience. So my questions are uh, for Dr. DeVivo. Uh, are there any regulatory barriers that have prevented timely training and certification for our much beloved air traffic controllers? Yeah, so thank you so much for that question. And we are a certified uh, a collegiate training institute as part of the FAA's program to work with institutions to offer air traffic control. And we are in New York, and they like to work with us because uh, our students want to come home. Right. Uh, so, uh, and they will do a set of four courses and then get a recommendation from us if they graduate and pass those courses effectively and go on to training at Oklahoma City. Um, I know that N90, because I'm in New York too, is has been a bit of an issue. It is um, something that we are more than, than happy to assist with um, because of the fact that our students want to come back to New York. Um, you know, the JFK Tower is almost completely filled with Vaughn graduates, um, and many of our students are at the TRACON as well. It's, um, it's a very complicated um, training spot, and it's hard to hold on to folks as well. So. I, I, I don't know enough about exactly what their training program is from Oklahoma City to the N90, um, but I do think that there are, are options to help with that. And it's good to hear you say that they wanna come home because I know that we're working hard to make sure that we keep uh, the 30 or so air traffic controllers that have uh, been asked by the FAA to move elsewhere uh, to stay at that facility. So that is, uh, I think that's what we all want for them to come home. Um, and obviously has the, has the current workforce challenges, how, it is, how has it affected your institution? Right, so we've lost about 26% of our enrollment since the start of COVID. We were on this nice uptick as the demand increased, uh, and COVID hit our families really hard. As you know, New York City was particularly hard hit by COVID. Our zip code was one of the hardest initially hit, and so our families, whose average family income is anywhere between 34 and 42,000, um, they lost their jobs, they lost family members who died because of the coronavirus, and so education was not something that they were able to do. So we had quite a few stopouts. But we are starting to see the, 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 the enrollment come back. The salaries certainly help in terms of encouraging uh, students to, to consider aviation and aerospace as a career path. Yeah, and so I guess to that point, have there been any changes that you've made at Vaughn to attract new students and to, to have that uptick once again? Yeah, so we really, really work hard to sell the return on investment, right? Okay. So we are talking a lot about a defined career pathway. That's why our students come to us, right? Because their students and their families wanna know what's the job at the end of this? Um, when can I um, you know, start to see some income from my family? And you know, we're not just changing that student story, we're changing that whole family's trajectory. Uh, and so, Having the ability to talk about the demand, which thankfully the media covers for us, <laughs> has been hugely helpful in terms of attracting students to the programs. Great. Right. Well, I appreciate your work, and obviously, uh, if there's anything that I can do to help uh, keep our people home and make yeah. sure that they stay working and living in New York, which is obviously very often burdened with uh, some high taxes, we want to keep them there. So I appreciate your work. Mr. Chair, I yield back.